Conventional thinking is that it's easier to beat Battletoads on your first try than it is to secure your contractual release from WWE. That's why it's a little surprising to pour over the list of those who escaped from the sports entertainment giant in 2019, because it's a little bit longer than you may have expected. And it's not even just lower carders and developmental prospects either. You could fashion a pretty impressive national wrestling promotion out of the names in this video. In fact, one Florida-based organization has fortified its rank with quite a few of the names ahead, which understandably would continue to make WWE a little bit skittish about letting their in-house talents go. Well, more so than ever anyway. The talents ahead were either released from the company or simply exited WWE at the expiration of their contract. The landscape of professional wrestling today is a lot different thanks to quite a few of these moving parts, and we're about to take a look at where all of them ended up. Mason Ryan, Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra Blaze, Norman Smiley, Zach Gowan, Bam Bam Bigelow, Ahmed Johnson, Tory Wilson, Buff, Bagwell, Robert Gibson, Dave Taylor, Terry Taylor, and Godfather's Homes. Dwayne Gill, Adam Bomb, Michael Hayes, Corvon, S.A. Rios, Jim and I, the manager from Kai and Ty, Jim Powers, Francine, Jack Swagger, Mean Gene, Fatchick Thriller, Duke the Dumpster, Oklahoma Manta! What happened to that wrestler? Someone main eventing, which leaves me lamenting. What happened to that wrestler? Some since long forgotten, but their memories live on. Ty Dillinger. What's fun about this video is hearing some performers' WWE names, which were used in the not-too-distant past, but now feel positively ancient thanks to the advent of All Elite Wrestling. Case in point, Ty Dillinger. He of the Decker-fingered taunts and crowd chants wandered aimlessly through WWE's undercard for the prior two years and requested his release from the company in February of last year. Days later, he was freed from the promotion and he joined AEW shortly after the expiration of his no-compete clause. Spears still wrestles for AEW as a chair-swinging heel under the tutelage of legendary horseman Tully Blanchard. TJP for all the hubbub about the 2016 Cruiserweight Classic, it's a bit startling how fast its winner descended down the card. TJ Perkins took home the tournament honors and the revived Cruiserweight belt after defeating Grand Metalik, but the exuberant Nintendo Fun Club member dropped the gold soon after to the Brian Kendrick and never really recovered. After existing as a peripheral player on 205 Live for some two years, TJP was released from WWE over a year ago, but has kept busy. In the year since, TJP has wrestled for, among other promotions, Impact Wrestling, and New Japan. Hideo Itami Rounding out a rather heavy-duty day of releases was that of 18-year pro Itami, better known as pro wrestling Noah prodigy Kenta. He signed with WWE in the summer of 2014, where he quickly joined the mix of top outside talents on the NXT brand. However, injuries and other derailments kept Itami from sustaining momentum, and the promising international star floundered. After a year spent on 205 Live, Itami asked for his release shortly after the 2019 Royal Rumble and formally got it weeks later. As Kenta again, he debuted for New Japan in June, joined Bullet Club, and held the Never Open Weight belt for five months. Arn Anderson Joining the list of three released talents that day was the firing of a longtime backstage presence. The legendary enforcer had become a producer for WWE in 2001 following the closure of WCW and served the company for the 18 years that followed and was reportedly the agent who worked with John Cena the closest. But Double A's time with WWE came to an end after he reportedly allowed an intoxicated Melina Fox to work a house show match in Saginaw, Michigan. Since then, Anderson became co-host of the Arn podcast with Conrad Thompson and also serves as on-air coach for Cody Rhodes in AEW. Jim Ross Though his voice had greatly diminished in WWE circles a decade later, good old JR remained at least partially tethered to the company, taking to the broadcast table for certain special events and matches. Ross re-signed with WWE in the spring of 2017 after a few years away, and his two-year return tenure included The Undertaker vs. Roman Reigns match at WrestleMania 33, the 2018 Mae Young Classic, and the head-scratching Manhattan Center portion of the Raw 25th Anniversary Show. After allowing his contract to lapse last March, Ross quickly signed with AEW in its startup phase, joining the promotion as an announcer and senior advisor. Dasha Fuentes Initially hired to WWE as a wrestler, Dasha transitioned into the role of backstage interviewer for NXT and later migrated to the main roster in that same role. 
Fuentes' time with WWE has been subject of criticism for her interviewing style, which some labeled as robotic, though Fuentes intimated that interviewers weren't supposed to outshine the talents. What did Fuentes as far as WWE goes was a backstage interview with Roman Reigns around WrestleMania 35, after which she was told she was being taken off of TV. Using her real name of Dasha Gonzalez, she now works for AEW on Spanish-language broadcasts and in control center segments. Gold Dust. A star presence through several key eras in professional wrestling, Goldust last wrestled for WWE in June of 2018 at a house show, before going off to have double knee surgery. When Brother Cody appeared as one of the faces of the new All Elite Wrestling promotion, you just knew that Dustin was going to end up alongside his siblings sooner or later. And sooner it was, as Dustin Rhodes officially announced his WWE release the same weekend that his debut AEW vignette aired. Following an all-time classic battle with Cody at Double or Nothing, Rhodes continues to work alongside his brother in AEW as both a wrestler and coach. Stacy Irvin Jr. This national champion gymnast at the University of Michigan signed with WWE the previous year, looking to transition into the world of professional wrestling. Irvin wrestled almost entirely on house shows, save for one TV appearance, teaming with Umberto Carrillo in a loss to the Street Profits on an NXT episode in February of 2019. After reportedly going through a concussion scare, Irvin requested his release in March 2019, and it was granted the next month. Irvin now runs his own fitness and lifestyle business, and is presently in a relationship with multi-time gold medal gymnast Simone Biles. Dean Malenko like Arn Anderson, Malenko also enjoyed an 18-year run behind the scenes for WWE, beginning shortly after his retirement from the ring in 2001. The Man of 1000 Holds brought much to the table in his role, but was suddenly let go from the company last April, seemingly out of the blue. Reports indicated that Malenko hadn't done anything wrong, but rather WWE was choosing to cycle in newer faces backstage, and thus an old guarder like Malenko was an odd man out. It didn't take long for Malenko to find work, as he quickly became AEW's senior producer. Dean Ambrose. The most talked about exit of the previous year, perhaps previous few years, was that of the Shield's lunatic fringe. Word broke right after the 2019 Royal Rumble that the former WWE champion had given his notice following numerous frustrations with creative and was out come the spring. Some thought this to be an elaborate work, even after the May 1st Escape video debuted on social media. All doubts were stamped out when Jon Moxley stormed the ring at the end of AEW's Double or Nothing pay-per-view, doling out paradigm shifts with zero prejudice. Moxley is currently the face of AEW, reigning as its world champion after defeating Chris Jericho at Revolution. Percy Watson once a wrestler in WWE during the absurdist game show days of NXT, Watson returned to the promotion as a commentator for WWE in 2016. Primarily, Watson was on the call for NXT, but also had stints for both 205 Live and Main Event. As 2019 wore on, Watson started getting replaced on different shows, most notably by Beth Phoenix on NXT broadcasts. Then in May, it was revealed that Watson was leaving WWE to pursue other opportunities, including acting. Since then, Watson has been a regular on the internet series Magic City, starring friends EC3, Drake Maverick, and Braun Strowman. Rhino The Man Beast may be getting up there in years, but Rhino still feels like he has much to contribute to the world of professional wrestling, as evidenced by the reason he left WWE. After a long period of inactivity from WWE television, Rhino made the decision to leave the company at the expiration of his deal in July. WWE countered by offering the 43-year-old Mauler double his downside guarantee to basically sit at home instead of working somewhere else. He declined, and 10 days before the end of his contract, Rhino turned up under a mask in Impact Wrestling, where he still works today. Eric Bischoff In June of 2019, WWE announced that Raw and SmackDown were going to be overtaken by veteran showrunners Paul Heyman and Eric Bischoff respectively, each assuming the title of Executive Director. While Heyman remains with Raw to this day, with his fingerprints evident on many parts of the show, Bischoff's time with SmackDown still confounds many, as reports emerged of a lack of product knowledge and even the Fox Network stating that promises regarding Bischoff as headman had gone unfulfilled. Bischoff still discusses his time and experiences in the business on the Conrad Thompson hosted podcast 83 Weeks. Alicia Fox It's not actually clear when Fox and WWE parted ways as there was no formal announcement of a release, but on this date her company profile was moved to the alumni section. 
After the aforementioned incident that got Arn Anderson fired, Fox only wrestled two more matches in the spring for WWE before disappearing from action altogether. Later in 2019, Fox had gone into recovery to deal with her alcoholism and revealed that she was several months sober as of November. Her future in the world of professional wrestling is currently unclear, but we wish Alicia the best of luck in her quest to remain healthy. Jordan Miles The events leading up to his release from the company made headlines on a near-daily basis, as the wrestler better known as ACH levied many accusations about his then-employer. After a Jordan Miles t-shirt with a questionable design was released, ACH accused WWE of racism. More angry tweets and social media videos followed, criticizing WWE's hierarchy, as well as former Ring of Honor co-worker Jay Lethal. On November 13th, ACH announced he was quitting WWE, and his release was confirmed over a week later. He has since returned to the independent circuit, most notably for the Illinois-based All-American Wrestling. Sin Cara The second man to assume the Sin Cara persona spent six continuous years in the role. The former Hunico had a few highlights in the role, including winning the NXT Tag Team titles from The Ascension alongside Lucha Dragon's partner Kalisto and wrestling for the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania 32. His last weeks with the company was spent in a rivalry with Andrade, amid which he asked for his release from WWE. Ultimately, his wish was granted in December, and he shortly after turned up in AAA. Now signed with the promotion, the former Sin Cara is now known as Cinta de Oro. The Ascension May as well make this a collective entry, since the stories of Connor and Victor are basically the same. At one time, the two apocalyptic brutes dominated the NXT tag team scene prior to what one would have assumed would be a big run on the main stage. Unfortunately, the Ascension were rendered dead in the water almost right out of the gate, and over four years of basement-level residency followed. After being inactive since WrestleMania week in 2019, Connor and Victor were released from WWE on the same day, and have since turned up on the independent scene, wrestling matches in the New York area. Luke Harper from the time he publicly revealed that he asked for his release in the spring of 2019, many agreed that Harper could use a fresh start elsewhere, as the woolly brawler had much untapped potential. His release wasn't granted at the time, and in fact he ended up in an angle with old partner Eric Rowan against Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan that autumn. Months later, Harper finally got his wish and was let go shortly before the Christmas holiday. After weeks and months of speculation, Harper, now Brody Lee once more, turned up in AEW revealed as the mysterious Dark Order Leader known as the Exalted One.